He didn't have to do it, but he did. I often think about sometimes, and I've said this in preaching, how we would have we would have failed. There was no That's way right. we could have. We weren't even worthy. Right. But even if we did get an opportunity to do something like that, well, nobody would nobody want to do it. But say if we had to go there, he did the whole thing without sinning. Right. He went through the whole crucifixion process without sinning. The, the, what they did to him, putting the crowns up on his head, beating them in the head, slapping him, spitting up on him. I always kind of joke about saying we would have been done once they spit us on. Spit on. We already been done. Mad, upset, mad. We're done. That's it. But that wasn't him. He didn't even sin. His anger wasn't even kindled toward them. There was he still. He was the perfect sacrifice. He was the only one. That could do it. He didn't have to do it. But he did. We're so thankful for all that God has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good this morning. I'm looking forward to the continuing of the service for the word that God's touched pastor with this morning, what he's going to share with us. Looking forward to the remainder of the service, how God's already moving. God wants to bless this morning. How many of you want to receive a blessing from Jesus this morning? I said, how many of you want to receive a blessing from Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. How I many you want to be a blessing to the work of God Amen. this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, let's do that as God has given this morning. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor if you would this time. Help us with the offering and service. Please pray the offering. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be gathered together in your presence. We pray that you would bless each gift and each giver according to their giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you're streaming online, you can always give through the program of God if you can't be here in person. Go there to our YouTube page and click on that link or through Facebook. Go to our homepage at Facebook and there's a link that will lead you through how to give. And be a blessing to the work of God and to the program of God. God's good to us. God loves us. And it's just only a portion of what he's blessed us with that we're giving to him. He didn't ask for all of it, but we know what God has given us. We know how God has blessed us. And it's just a blessing just to give back. You know, we have rent we pay. We have, you know, cars that break down and we fix. You know, I my, my AC is down and I live in Louisiana with no AC or whatever, you know. But I'm thankful that I have a car to drive in. God's blessed me with that car. It was, it was a used car. And I always think, like, man, that car has been a blessing to my family the whole time we've had it. And I'm still thankful for it. You say, oh, well, it's not the brand new one. It's not the 2021 out there or whatever. But God gave it to me. I needed a van. My family was growing. And one day I got into an accident, so to speak. And I always kind of joke about it. I said, the first thing I thought about was, well, I guess I got a van now. But God brought the whole family through. We were saved. No injuries or anything. But he blessed me with what I needed. It, and it's, it's just been a blessing to, to my family. And, you know, you don't never know what God's doing when you pay your tithe and offerings. Because you may not see it in a financial way, but there's something that may break down on you that won't break down on you because God's going to keep it. There's clothes that, you know, may, may end up wearing out on you that God said, hey, it's not going to wear, wear out right now because he's been paying his tithe. He's been giving the offering, so I'm going to bless him. It's times where I've been driving on the road and I've avoided accidents or collisions. I think, say, man, God, if it wouldn't have be, been for you. I would have gotten to that situation. God keeps us in so many ways. Everything that we do for God doesn't have to come through a financial blessing. But God blesses our health. He blesses our family. He keeps us. He blesses us spiritually. And yes, he does bless us financially. But that shouldn't be the goal of why we give. We should give to God because God has given to us. Yes. Hallelujah. At this time, Sister Watson's going to sing a special of that pastor become the minister of the Lord to us. God bless you.
simple, but it's so good. talking about the blessings, all that God has provided for us. And he was talking, of course, about tithing and offerings. And, and it's true, he does provide faithfully. And he said it in his word. And we're not going to go into all the different portions of scripture where he talks about that. But it's true, the blessings that God provides for those who are faithful in the things that God first gives us. And the songs that we sing and the song that she just sang... Taking our sin, our cross, our shame, Amen. rising Amen. again, we bless his name. When we're dry, he fills our cup. When Whoa. we fall, he Amen. lifts us up. Amen. He's done so much yes. Yes. for us. Amen. God is so good. Nothing we need that he hasn't provided Whoa. for us. Amen. And you know, sometimes it's just so wonderful to be in the worship service. That's right. When you're singing about his goodness and his love. When you're lifting up your hands in His name. Yes. When you're just surrendered to Him and you know His presence. Yes. And you just know His goodness surrounds you. Yes. Yes. There might be problems outside those doors. There might be problems down the street. But you know that right here, God yes. is with you. And God is good. Yes. Yes. And God has everything that you need. That's right. And even when you go back to those problems outside these doors and down the streets, you'll never forget come on, come on. that God is good. Yes. And that you can always call on Him, That's right. yeah. even when you're struggling. And I like to think about Peter. When they were up on top of that Mount of Transfiguration, you remember that part of Scripture where Jesus took James and Peter and John up on top of the mountain and he was transfigured in all of his glory before them and they were talking and yes, they saw Jesus talking with Elijah and Moses and the disciples didn't know what to say and then a cloud overshadowed them and God the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved son, hear him. And then Whoa. the cloud right. was gone and Moses and Elijah were gone and Jesus stood, them as he stood before them as he was before and then finally Peter didn't know what to say, so he just said, I'll say something. And he said, it's good for us to be here. Let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and let's just stay up here and worship. Sometimes it's wonderful to be in a church service where the Spirit of God's yes. presence is just yes. thick. Yes. Yes. And, and you yes, can sir. worship God yes, and sir. say, I never want this to end. Come on, Come on. Come on. But there's a time where you got to go back out those doors Come on. All right. and face everything that you were dealing with before you came in. And even at the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus said we can't stay up here forever. Because at the bottom of that hill, there was a man and his son that needed Jesus. Jesus said we got issues we still got to deal with. And we still got issues we got to deal with. But to know that we've met God. Yes. To know that God is good. To know I can hold on to what God has done for me in just a wonderful church service means that I know I can go another day serving. That's yes. right. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. He's so good. He's given us so much. Yes. We're going to talk about getting more from him today. Yeah. From the book of Joshua, we'll be taking our Bible reading, chapter 17, beginning at verse 14. 
And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people, for as much as the Lord hath blessed me yes. hitherto? Praise God for the blessings of God. Yes. Amen. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country, and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who are of uh, Beth Shean and her towns, and they that are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even Ephraim, and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people, and hast great power. Thou shalt not have one lot only, but the mountain shall be thine, for it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine. For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they be strong. All right. With the help of the Lord this morning, preaching a message, very appropriately, I believe, from all that God has already done in this service. Yes. Message of the title, or the title of the message, Wanting More. Mm. Reverend Brooks, sir, would you please pray over the message of the messenger? I love the Father, I'm thankful to be gathered once again in our house this Sunday morning. God, I ask you the best pastor of all as he preaches your word, God. As you lay it upon his heart, Father, help him to deliver it that and only you can put it on his heart to deliver it, Father. Bless him especially. Continue to move in his service, Father. Open our hearts to receive, Father, yes. this blessed message that you've given us this morning, Father. Father, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as a personal Lord and Savior, Father, we ask you that they will accept you this morning. Realizing that you're the only way, that you are the only truth, and only life comes from you, Jesus. We appreciate you this morning. Yes, we love you. Right. Have your way. Continue to move you and bless in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Joshua is a very encouraging, very victorious book of the Bible. It's one of my favorites. It tells how Joshua and the children of Israel came from their wandering into the wilderness, into the land that God had promised them, and how they conquered it, and how Joshua, at this point in the book, began dividing the promised land among the tribes of the children of Israel by lot, according to their tribe. God had said, this is how the tribes will settle the land that I have given them. All right. And the tribes of the children of Joseph were two tribes. Joseph had two sons, and their father Isaac had blessed them and said, Joseph will be two tribes. His sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, will both be a tribe. The tribes of the children of Joseph, because they were so great in number, as they said here, requested more than the one portion that Joshua had allotted them out of the promised land that had been conquered by the nation as a whole as they went on their conquering through the land. Come on. They requested more than the one portion that had been appointed them. And Joshua allowed it. He said, okay. That sounds good to me. But they were going to have to go and take what they said they wanted. And at first they considered the risks involved. They said that the enemy was strong. They were giants. They had chariots of iron. The land itself was rugged and hilly and wooded. But Joshua encouraged them and said, you can take it. You will be stronger than them. You have the strength. You can have what you desire if you will go in the strength that God has given you and possess it. You don't need somebody else to do it for you. That's right. That's right. God has given us so much. And we've already known that even in what he's done in this service. He's given us so much. The blessings of God are evident to anybody who's believed on Him and received salvation. That's right. That's right. The adoption of children 
by Jesus Christ according to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory and grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. He's abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He knows what we have need of, and he in his wisdom is able to provide and according to the, what we have need of when we need it. He's not going to spoil his children, but he'll certainly meet the needs of his yes. children. Yes. Amen. The redemption of his blood, the forgiveness of yes. sins, that we can stand before God pure and holy, not in the sins of our past, but having been cleansed by the blood of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that perfect sacrifice. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, that we as joint heirs with Christ unto the Father have access to everything that belongs to Jesus. That's what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. All that's his is likewise ours. Right. We that's are right. children right. of God. Yes, right. Say it. That's right. According that's right. to the good pleasure of his will, because he has favor toward us, yes. because he loves us. And we could talk about our love that we have toward him. I love him because he saved me. Yes. I love yes. him because he forgave yes. me. I love him because he meets my needs on right. a daily basis. That's but right. we love him because he first yes. loved us. Amen. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter addressing the church, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according to his design, uh, divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Everything that we had in this world before we came to God was just going to corrupt us, was just leading to our own destruction. Everything that we wanted, the things that are in this world through lust, Everything that looked good to the eyes, everything that seemed pleasing unto the flesh, everything that the world exalts is just leading to the destruction of humanity. But we've escaped it. Not by some mental exercise, not by some philosophy of man, but because we've been made partakers of the divine nature of God. How? Through knowing Him. Through knowing him, through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. And he has given us all things pertaining unto life and godliness. Now David said in the Psalms that the years of our lives have been about three score and seven years. A life expectancy, about 70 years. So we may have 70 years whether we're serving God. We may have 70 years if we're not serving God. Some have more, some have less. He's talking in general there. But we might have 70 years walking this life doing our own thing and then we die. We might have 70 years walking this life and our, uh, it's serving God and then we die. But all things pertaining unto life and godliness are going to lead me into life eternal. Come on. All things that we seek after through this world lead unto the corruption, the destruction, and lost hope. But God has given us so much with those exceeding great and precious promises that we'll be in glory with Him. Amen. Amen. That's right. When Jesus told His disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. Well, Right. And where I am, you may be also. Yes, if it yes. were not so, I would have told you. Well, right. I'm telling you what you're following me for. I'm not leading you astray. Mm -hmm. If you were following me for anything else, I would have told you what you were following me for. You're following me to be with me. Yes. Why do you follow somebody? Kids play follow the leader. Why? So they can go where the leader's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We follow Jesus so we can go That's where right. he's at. Right. Amen. We know we've got the promises of eternity. Yes, we right. know we've got forgiveness of sins. Amen. We know we've got the blessings of God. All right, all right. We know that our eternal salvation in Him, by faith in Him, what a blessing it is to have those exceeding great and precious promises that Peter talks about here through the knowledge of Him. Amen. Amen. 
That's right. And what a blessing it is to know that when we say, God, I think I want more. Come on. I think that there's some more that I can have in this life to live yes. for you, to glorify you, to be a blessing to others. God, I want some more. I want more than just to sit in church. On, I want sir. more than just Say to read it. my Bible and to have this all being about me. God, I want more than it just being about me and you. Maybe, God, I want to be a blessing to somebody else. I want more. Amen. Amen. I want more. Amen. Just as Ephraim and Manasseh, those children of Joseph, wanted more. They desired more land. We're great. Could we have more than just this one rock that you provided for us, Joseph? They were not being ungrateful for what they had received. Come on, come on. Right. But knowing that through what they had received, God was glorified. All right. Yes. All right. That God would receive further glory as they expanded. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in God, God is certainly glorified. Yes. They asked for more. We also want more out of living for God right. than what we've already received. Whether you've been living for God for 10 minutes since you come to the altar, since you made that commitment in your heart, God, I'm going to live for you. And you've already known, even as we've sung and preached and talked about the goodness of God, you've known that change in your life that's so much better than any of the other changes you've tried to make for yourself. You've known the goodness of God, whether you've been living for Him for 10 minutes, 10 years, 20, 30 decades, All right. however long it's been, you've known the goodness of God. You say, God, I want more. All right. I've been glorifying you for 10 years, 10 minutes, God. I want to glorify you more. Not to take away from what you've already done, mm -hmm. but to do more with the more that you'll give me. All right. mm -hmm. Amen. There's nothing wrong with asking God for more of what will glorify God more. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it must glorify Him. That's yeah. right. The Israelites had taken the promised land as God commanded them. And they served God all the days of Joshua and all the, the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. And they were glorifying God in the land that God gave them. And so God knew and Joshua knew that, yes, they'll glorify God even as they take more. All right. So Joshua told them they could have more. Yes, and we read something similar about knowing that God will be glorified in the more that those who receive of him do gain. In a parable that Jesus told in Matthew 25, he told the parable of the talents. And a talent is a, a weight, a measure of weight, of precious metals. Jesus told the parable of the talents of, sil uh, of servants who were given of their master. One was given five talents of silver. One was given two talents of silver. And one was given one talent of silver. And the master departed. And while he was gone... The servant who was given five and the servant who was given two took what they were given and invested it. They invested what they were given and they returned to their master twice as much as they had received. Yes, sir. That's right. And the servant who was given one talent was not given less because the master didn't like him. He wasn't given less. Because the master was setting him up for failure. He was given less because the master knew what he was capable of. That's right. That's right. The master didn't want him to be in over his head. Mm -hmm. The master did not want to set him up for failure. Right. He knew what he could prove himself with. Yeah. So he was setting him up for success. That's right. That's not right. undervaluing him. Not putting him in too deep. It says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 15, he gave to every man according to his several abilities. Right. He knew That's what right. he was capable of. Right. So he gave him one talent of silver, just like he gave two and five to the other ones. The other ones took it, invested it, and were able to return to their master twice as much as they had gained in the first place. But the man who received one took it. And the Bible says when the master returned, That that servant said, I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Mm -hmm. And lo, here is thine. Here thou hast, that is thine. Here thou hast, that is thine. My God. And the master rewarded those servants that were faithful, mm -hmm. that were productive, that were industrious, that honored him. 
with what they had received from him. Just as when we ask God more of what honors him, he'll say, yes, you've been faithful with what you've received. I will gladly give you more. Mm -hmm. And when those that were received five and two returned back to the master more than what they had received originally, he said, you have been faithful in a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. But when that one who had received one because of that bitterness, because of the attitude that he had, said, here you go, just giving back what you gave me. I didn't do anything with it. I hid it in the earth. I sat on it, didn't do nothing. Didn't even try. It would have been something if he tried. It would have been something, I believe, it would have been something if he even said, look what my master gave me. Wasn't he generous in giving this to me? Yeah. Even to honor his master and just yeah. proclaiming the goodness of his master and entrusting him with it. That's right. Can you at least honor God in telling others of the goodness of God and entrusting right. you with yeah. salvation? Yeah. Can you honor God in at least telling others of his goodness in saving you? Or do you just keep it shut and say, well, I don't have to do anything now. Now that I'm free from... My sin, I don't have to do anything. Now that I'm free from that problem, I don't have to go back to church. There's a lot of people that treat God that way. They treat God like a fire escape. Once they've escaped the fire, they say, I don't need that set of stairs anymore. I remember when I was a kid, the elementary school that I went to had a, it was two stories. I grew up in a very small town, and the elementary school was two stories. The first, second, third graders were on the first floor, the 4th, 5th, and 6th graders were on the 2nd floor, and it was divided up. 1st and 2nd grade is on this side, 3rd grade is on that side, 4th grade is on this side, 5th and 6th grade are on that side, on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd floors. And the 5th and 6th graders, their fire escape was a slide. And we all thought it was cool, and you know, fire drills, little kids get excited about fire drills because it's something out of the ordinary. You do them about twice a year, maybe. And we all waited till we got to fifth and sixth grade, because then we could use the slide for fire drills. By the time I got to fifth grade, they replaced the slide with stairs, because the slide was old, and, and it had a covering on it, and it was a steel slide, and you know how hot those things get. So I was disappointed. By the time I got to fifth grade, my sister got to use, my older sister got to use the slide when she did fire drills, because she was a couple of grades ahead of me, but by the time I got to Fifth grade, they'd already replaced the slides. That was one of my big disappointments of childhood. (laughs) How minor those big disappointments of childhood can be. But sometimes people treat God like a fire escape. Say, well, I don't need those stairs anymore because I've already made it out of the fire. No, God's not a fire escape. God is life. Yes, amen. If you leave life behind, what are you left with? You might have made it out of that fire, but that fire is not the only thing that's going to take you out of life. You leave life behind, you don't have anything left. Just because God delivered you from one problem doesn't mean that he wants to leave you alone now. He says, I will sustain you. The Bible says that by him we are sustained. He upholds us at all things. But this uh, unfaithful servant, when the master gave him a talent of silver, he said, you can do something with this. I'm entrusting you with it. And those other servants, when they were faithful, God willingly gave them more. The master willingly gave them more. So when we honor God with what we have from them, from him, then our character demonstrates, our character demonstrates that we will honor him when he gives us more. All right. That when we pray, God, I would like more to glorify you with, then it's obvious, it's already been demonstrated, we've already set that precedent in our own lives, just as the psalmist said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart. That's two sides there. Mm -hmm. Delight yourself in the Lord. You've already proven that you're going to delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Just like the tribes of the children of Joseph. Just like the servants with the talents. If we desire more, 
often we'll have to exercise our own strength, our own faith, yes, yes. our own wisdom in order to gain it. God says, yes, you can have it. Joshua said, yes, you can have that land. Look, there it is. You can have the land of the Perizzites. Go cut down the woods. Go defeat the giants. Even though they've got chariots of iron, you can have that land. All of it. The Israelites had conquered the promised land as a nation. They all went out to battle together. But Joshua told Joseph that if they wanted more land, they could have it as long as they went and took it for themselves in the strength that God gave it to them. It wouldn't be handed to them. It wouldn't be handed to them. The servants that were given the talents from their master, in order to gain on that principle that they had received from their master, that capital, they had to invest it with the knowledge, with the wisdom that they had learned from their master. That's right. And how do we know that they learned it from their master? Because of the accusation that the wicked one made against their master. <laughs> I know that you reap where you haven't sown. So he was accusing him of, of being dishonest. He was falsely accusing him. Right. Because right. the wise ones were able to use that same knowledge, that same wisdom yes, to sir. gain using the wisdom that their master had demonstrated. Yeah, right. But God has given us everything that we have. Yes. God has given us the principle, yes. the capital, that we can make an investment on. To use that same analogy. God has given us everything that we have. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. All the money that we have. And for that matter, all the money that people who don't serve God have belongs to Him. That's right. That's right. All the land. Yes. All the food. All the houses. All the everything. And all of us are sustained by him. That's right. And again, he said that in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Yes. And he wasn't just talking about Christians. He was talking about everybody. All right. Yeah. All right. Are we going to take what he's blessed us with and hide it in the earth and then complain that he didn't give us enough? when we don't do anything to honor him with what he's provided. Say, Come on, say, say, God, you didn't give me enough to do anything. God, you didn't give me enough to even get started. Yes, he has. He's given us everything. There's people who say, I don't have enough of an education and I don't have money to get an education. Libraries are free. That's it. And I'll tell you from experience <laughs> right. that you can get a lot more and a lot better education from reading good books from the library right. than you can paying a lot of money going to a college. Right. 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 And people that have paid a lot of money to go to a good college, a college with a good name, I'll say, can tell you that you spend some money on classes that you just don't need. Yeah. Right. You can get a good education for yourself just by reading good books. That's right. People that have learned a lot from their own experiences and put it into books and say, I want other people to know this. You don't have to pay a lot to get a lot. And in God, you don't have to pay anything to get everything. Come on. All you have to do is be faithful. God, I'll be faithful. If you give me something, I'll be faithful in using it for you. And I want more, God. And in the more that you give me, I'll be faithful in serving you. But sometimes when we say that we want that more, God says, okay, you put more faith into it, and you can have more. All right. You put more prayer into it, and you can have more. You put more study of my word into it, and you can have more. Do you want more confidence? Do you want more joy in life? Right, right. Do you want more stability in life? You can't get those things by wanting somebody else to do it for you. Right. You can't gain confidence when somebody else is doing all the things right. for you. That's right, sir. That's right. So what do you got to do? You've got to exercise faith. Yes. That, okay, even if I make a mistake, I will learn from that yes. mistake. Yes. You want more joy. Joy is genuine Lasting that that happiness, that that knowing that things are good and yes. right, and you can't have that when somebody else 
external from you is supporting all of the things that are good and right. Because then they may have joy, and you might have that momentary pleasure, but that joy is not going to be internal unless you are doing the things that are good That's and right. That's right. Do you want more peace in your heart? Do you want more knowledge of God? Then you have to eliminate worldliness and increase godliness. You've got to recognize there are things that I'm doing, there are ways that I'm living that I've got to stop. Come on. God help me to stop. Yes, yes. And there are things that I know I ought to be doing. And the Bible says to him that knoweth to do right and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Right, sir. Just simply not doing it makes it sin when you know it's right to do it. Mm -hmm. I need to stop doing what I know is wrong and start doing what I know is right. Amen. And Amen. you will gain more. Yes, sir. Peace. Amen. Right. Knowledge of God. Amen. See it. Now listen to this. Something that, you know, is tangible. The stuff you can put your hands on. Do you want, maybe, and in honoring God, he'll bless. Mm -hmm. God said he will. Mm -hmm. Do you want better circumstances for a job? Better circumstances for your finances? Better circumstances in your home life. Okay? You've got to show God. You've got to start with what you've got. Mm -hmm. Because again, even what we have right now is what he's given us. Yes, that's right. There are some people, as, as, as insignificant as you see what you have to be, there are people who have less. Yes. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. You've got to show God. That even with you, what you have right now, you'll be thankful mm -hmm. and faithful yes, yes, sir. to honor him. Amen. That means, God, I'm going to be faithful to you, diligent about my business. The circumstances of my home life aren't that great. But in my home, I'm going to honor you. Amen. Amen. We may not get along in everything. But the Bible says, as much as lies within you, live at peace with all men. So I'm not going to be stirring up these arguments. And when people want to argue with me, I'll just keep my mouth shut. Because it takes two to argue. <laughs> and sometimes that's all it takes. is just a soft answer that turns away wrath. Yes. Amen. When somebody wants to stir you up, just say... Maybe you're right. And you don't even have to go wholeheartedly agreeing with them because you said maybe. <laughs> but it's enough to, to set them off guard and say, wow, he's not arguing with me today. All right, all right. And you can maybe do a little bit of kindness for them. All right. When you've been asking them to do a chore all week, you can set an example and kind of clean up a little bit. You can, you can do things in your own home life to honor God. If you're asking God to make things better in your home life, yeah. asking God to make things better in your finances, asking God to make things better on the job, are you showing God that with what He has provided already, you're going to be thankful. You're going to be faithful. And you're going to honor Him. Yes. Because that's what he'll bless. Because that's what he said he would give more to. He'll give more to you of what you're honoring him with. Think about that. If you want more of something, give it to God. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. What do you do if you want? If, if, if I go to the store and I buy a package of seeds... And I want more of what I've got in that package. What do I do with it? Do I eat it? Now, a lot of seeds are edible. You go you get a pot of gumbo and you got a lot of okra seeds in there. Because they chop up okra and put it in there. Okay? And I, I went into the store and I bought a package of okra seeds a couple of weeks ago. But I didn't just throw them all in a pot. I planted them. And now I've got okra growing. And I'm going to get a lot more seeds from what I've 
put into the soil Amen. than what I would have got if I had just put it into my belly. Amen. You want God to honor something? Whatever you want from God, Come on. Say it. whatever you want God to bless, whatever you want God to give you more Amen. of, give it to God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Give it to God. Amen. And He'll tell you, you've got to be faithful. You want more of it? You've got to put more into it. More faithfulness, more dedication, more prayer, more study. Yeah. Oh, Just oh. like Joshua told those children of Joseph, you can have it, but it's not going to be handed right. to you. Right. You've got to put a little bit more oh. effort into it. You've got to go and clear those Amen. woods. You've got to go and drive out those enemies. Right. You've got to show God, but God will give it to Amen. you. You're Amen. able. Amen. You can have it. And listen to this. I'm wrapping it up with this, sister, if you come to the keyboard. After... After Joshua told the children of Joseph, you can go have more land. All right. Guess what happened? There was another tribe that said, wait a second, if they can have more, we can have more. Mm. Your life be an example to somebody else. That's right. Your life be an example to somebody else. You can encourage somebody else Whoa. just as they see God blessing you. And you say, I just be here to God. That's right. I want God to bless my finances so I'm not stingy with my finances to God. I want God to bless me on the job so I do my job as if I'm doing it for God, not just for my boss. I want God to bless my family so I'm good to my wife, I'm good to my children, as God requires it of me. Not because they always do every detail that pleases me, but because it's honor unto God to treat them right. Thank you, Jesus. And the children of Dan saw what God did for the children of Joseph. And it says, the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. Therefore, the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem and took it and smote the edge of the sword and possessed it right. and dwelt therein and called Leshem Dan after the name of Dan their father. They said, wait, if Joseph can do that, Whoa. then there's no reason we can't. And if Brother Brooks can do it, there's no reason that I can't. And if I can't, then there's no reason that you can't. And if you can't, then there's no reason that you can't. And if you can't, then there's no reason that you can't. And if you can't, there's no reason that you can't. If you can't, then there's no reason that anybody can't. Because we serve the same God. And He's no respecter of persons. And those that are faithful to Him, He said He will bless. God is faithful. And He's given us so much. And we know the blessings of God. Even as we were talking about at the beginning of service. And we knew His goodness as we were worshiping. His spirit is present with us now, yes. even if it was at the beginning of the service. And we just worshiping him, know the presence of his spirit, know the goodness of God. But sometimes there's things that you ask God, God, I just want more. And just as I'm glorifying you and serving you in the salvation that you gave me, the newness of life that I have in you. God, I want to serve you in a good family life. Yes. God, I want to honor you in, in, in better circumstances on the job. God, I want to honor you in that I have more confidence in myself. God, I want to honor you in having genuine joy in life. I want more, God. And God says you can have it. But again, somebody else isn't going to do it for you. Give what you have to God. And He'll abound in giving you more back again. As we bow our heads and close our eyes this morning, in reverence to God, and out of respect for those who are also here today, let's seek God in prayer. If you need salvation, He will save you. If you need to be delivered from your sins and know that you're going to heaven to be with Him, He'll give you those exceeding great and precious promises yes. of glory eternally with Him. And if having known those promises, you say, God, I want more. Whatever it is, you say, God, I'll glorify you now with what I have in you. He'll bless you with more as you glorify Him in what He gives you. Pray. Seek God. Commit your ways also unto Him, and He will bring it to pass. God bless you as you pray this morning.
God, for the blessings that we have in you through Jesus Christ, your Son, for the promises that we have in Him that are yea and amen. We thank you, O God, for each one that's here this morning, for each one that's listening to the message, O God, with hearts to receive your blessings, your truth, your salvation, and your spirit, O God. We pray, O God, that all needs and every prayer lifted unto you by faith is met and answered. Oh God, and in each answer, you be honored, glorified, that no prayer be hindered, and that in each honor we give unto you, we know that you are faithful, God, in providing again that next need. And even the desires of our heart as we continue to serve and faithfully call upon you. Bring us back again at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. It's been good to be here with you.